around the world and here at home, bringing relief, hope, and the life-changing message of Jesus. You're listening to the Mize Missions Podcast with Terry Mize. Hello, everyone, and welcome today to Terry Mize Ministries Podcast. Terry and I are so glad you have joined us for this wonderful opportunity that we have to sit and share with you the Word of God. And so we want to just remind you, we're on here every Wednesday with a brand new podcast that'll be on the air for a week. And then the next Wednesday, we put up a brand new one. And if you happen to miss a week, you can go to terrymiseministries.com or .org and you can uh, go there and look on the website and look at the archive vault and we have them all there for you. So you, uh, through the wonderful gift of technology in our generation, you have access to everything that we've been saying over the last several months. So here we are, darling. You want to share with the folks here some more today and they can tell a friend or someone about terrymize.com and they can hear the broadcast right along with us. Sure. Well, it's always glad to, always good to be with you. Always good to be sharing the word of God. That's you know, right. I was, I was thinking a little bit ago, Renee, you, you've used the phrase a whole lot over the years uh, about uh, God shopping. Right. <laughs> you know, you said if we're going to go God shopping, if we're going to shop around for right. a God with all the gods there are in the world, my, my. that uh, that Jehovah God's the God to pick. That's right. That's and, right. Uh, and, I, and I've thought a lot about that. And, of course, I've preached a lot about that over all the years because – uh, Jehovah God. That's right. You, you know, a lot of times people say, well, they're all the same God. Well, this right. religion, this religion, this religion, they're all serving the same God. That's just not true. No, it's Jehovah not true. Jehovah God says, I, I, I am the Lord. I change not. Right. He says, there's only one God. You know, there's no God like Jehovah. Right. And, and the big difference is, is that, uh, well, I mean, there's a lot of big differences. Like he's alive. <laughs> and right. He's real. And, uh, and Jesus is alive and Jesus yeah. rose from the dead. Those, those are big differences. But, but right. to me, the big difference is for the people is that, uh, the word of God works. Right. God's word, Jehovah God, his word works and right. he is a healer. He is a miracle worker. Yes, he is. He is alive. His word is alive. And, you know, I've made this statement many, many times over the years just to, uh, just to Christians. Uh, and I've said, uh, you know, if there wasn't a devil, then it just wouldn't matter what church you go to. That's right. If it wasn't a devil, you go to any church you right. want to, and no big deal. Who cares? Yeah. And and just find a program you like, or a pastor right. you like, or a or a church that's big enough, or little enough, or yeah. or what whatever you know your your kids like, your you know, whatever. But there is a devil. There sure is. And there is sickness, and there is disease, evil. and there is poverty, evil. and there is evil in the world. That's right. And so I want a church that's got a pastor that can fight hell. For me, right. that can that can feed the sheep, lead the sheep to clean uh, water, cool water, and green grass, and right. can run the wolves off because the That's wolves it. are out there, and yes, and are. we need the wolves run off, and we need to be protected by the power of God, and so uh, that's to me is what makes the difference in our God. And, and any other of the gods of the world. And you don't take it from me. I'm a missionary. I know the other gods of the world. No, I've been to the right. nations of the that's world. Right. I've been to the religions right. of the world. And, you know, our, our our Bible, our holy book, every religion has its holy book. Yes, it does. Well, our, our Bible, our holy book, uh, not only tells our, our heroes' successes, but also tells our heroes' failures. That's right. It tells you why. Uh, Samson died with the Philistines. Right. And you know, it tells you why uh, the, the, the Saul's kingdom was taken from him and his life was taken from him and he died and his son Jonathan died. Right. You know, it, it, it tells you our hero's successes, but it also tells you our hero's failures and it tells you why they were a success and why they were a failure. So we can take that same word and say, okay, I don't want to do this. I don't want to go this way. Right. I don't want to do that. Or I do want to do this. I do want to go this direction. I do want to uh, use this as an example. Right. And so we've got the word of God, the Bible, about real people and about their successes, That's about right. their failures, about what made it work, what made it fail. And then we can learn from that, and we don't have to reinvent the wheel. And we can go back and say, okay, I know this is the word of God, and I know this works, and I'm going to stand on it. And right. uh, and, and I, I don't know. I just I've just thought a lot lately about the different religions. And the different gods, and uh, thank God for Jehovah. There's no God like Jehovah, <laughs> well, and yet Christians right. in America have have gotten so cooled off, and churches have gotten so cooled off uh, to where um, so many of them are so dead, or just so religious that there's really, when you look around at them, it's like, well, I can't tell one from another. But there ought to be a major difference. We ought to have, we ought to be in an alive church. A church is singing the word, preaching the word, talking the word, doing the word, having salvations, having healings, having miracles. And, uh, I, you know, if you're going to do this, you might as well win. 
Well, and you might as well, and I don't put this on a crass level, but I mean, it should be something that's, that it's not just fun. Uh, someone said, if you're not, if you're not having fun, you're not doing it right. Uh, there is there is a great joy and, and and excitement about the things of God, but there is also everything about Christianity. It's to me, it's the number one marketing tool uh, in sharing the gospel. Is that it's one on one relationship. The primary verse people use to to bring people into the kingdom of God is John three sixteen. For God so loved the world. That he, and he's talking about people there. He's not talking about mountains, hills, and valleys, and nations. He's talking about human life. And if I were God shopping, like you mentioned earlier, the number one thing I'd be looking for in a God, does he love me? <laughs> yeah, sure. You know, that's the number. I want to know if I'm going to have a relationship, or is this just a do's and don't religion? Does he, does he know me? <laughs> yeah, is, or is this just a do's and don't religion? Or is it based on how I dress, or how I look, or what my gender is, or what nation I've come from? Uh, what my what my social standing in life is, how much is in my bank account. Uh, God does, I don't want a God that is going to just judge me on an outer appearance that I had nothing to do with at birth, that God's not going to, that God, a God or a philosophy is going to be prejudiced towards my gender or my race or my standing in life. All of these things have to be considered. If you're going to look for a God, you want a God that is going to love you. And we have a God that so boldly comes along and says, he, if we accept him, he will come and live in us. <laughs> no, no other religion says that. No other, no other religion would, would say their God lives in them. No. To say that in any other religion. And it's not just a philosophy of the mind. It's something that has to, if you believe man is spirit, soul, and body, I'm always looking for the logical buildup and progression of thought. If I'm going to look for a God, I want a God that is going to love me. Then number one, how much does he love me? What is his actual involvement with me? Well, this one says he's going to come and live in me and that his concept of me being in the family is that I'm in him. I'm well, in Christ. The word I'm, tells us Christ in you is right, the hope of glory. Is the hope of glory. And then when you find out all of that, you find out the legality of the thing that the blood of Jesus actually gave you a position to sit at the right hand. This God has a throne and he invites me to sit at his right hand of favor. Sure. I mean, there's so many things that you can look at. Well, will this God provide for me? Yes, he said he'd meet all my needs. Will this God heal me? By your stripes, you are already healed when you accept the covenant. Uh, will this God protect me? I've given you angels to charge over you. Well, you look at all the benefits of a relationship with a God like this, you just start checking them off. Check, 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 check that this God will do more for me than what some other God says that, that women are second class citizens or the men have to shave their heads and grow goatees and wear orange robes or they have to uh, do a certain way or grow a long beard and wear, cover their head or women are not have to sit in the back or sit on the right or sit somewhere else or, and all of the rules, the more religious something becomes, the more rules there are for the women and the more prejudice there is towards others that are not in their group. And that's not Christianity. Christianity, the doors are slung wide open. Whosoever will may come and god just does not look at the outer man he looks at the heart yes absolutely absolutely you know uh, you saying that women sit on the right or sit at the back or whatever reminds me that just in a couple of weeks we'll be in romania right and uh, in the middle of march we'll be we'll be uh, ministering in romania to right. gypsy pastors yes and uh, we'll have 200 pastors and their wives right. or pastors and wives and uh, of course we'll we'll put the bill for all that we'll we'll pay for their hotel We'll pay for their food. We'll pay three right. meals a day. We'll pay for their their lodging. We'll pay some of them. We'll help them with transportation. Yeah, and that's all just part of serving the men and women of that country and bringing them in. And then you're going to feed them the word of God. Absolutely, and, and of course, open their heart. And I've been ministering to this group for quite a few years, about twenty but, but years. Bunch of years now. About twenty and, years. And uh, since I've been ministering to that particular group of gypsies, right. they've started over four hundred churches. It's and yet, amazing. and yet, we've had to push over a lot, a lot of <laughs> sacred cows over yeah. over the over the decades and over the years, because uh, even though they're Christian, they they've chosen the right God, they've chosen Jehovah God, they've That's chosen right. Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. But because of that old lack of teaching right. and the old church bondage, then yeah. then, then the women are a second class citizen, and women uh, have to sit on the other side. You know, when I look at a crowd. 
like in a lot of third world nations, when I look out at the crowd I'm preaching to in a church, I'm talking about Christians. Uh, I never know who's married and who's not, or who belongs together and who doesn't, because right. the men will be on one side of the church, the women will be on the other side of the church. So that's one sacred cow I have to work on pushing over. I had to do that in Mexico years and years ago. Yeah, it used and, to be uh, that way all and, the and, time. Yeah, it's that way in so many countries. But right. now you're in, in Romania, and we've got them sitting together. Now and, it's changed. You know, but but even even if you choose the right God. Then you've got to choose the word and see the word and the right. liberty of the word and the, and the liberty of the Holy Spirit. Now, that doesn't mean that God doesn't have things he doesn't like. Right. You know, it doesn't mean you just live any way you want to. You no, know, some Christians and today God have gotten so. God is a God so, of order. Some Christians today have gotten churches have gotten so far out in left field right. that, that they have this practice or desire or belief that, that they want to live like a pig and be blessed like a sheep. <laughs> You know, and they think, well, I can just live any way I <laughs> want to, true? and God loves Accurately. me, and God's already forgiven me, and it doesn't matter. Well, that that's not really true. No, and, that's and, right. And, and you know, you know, people are always hollering, uh, "Oh, that's law, that's law, that's law." I, we don't want to hear any law. You know, brother Terry, this is law, and that's bondage, and this isn't. Well, it, it's like this: the, the Old Testament and the New Testament. If you look in the Old Testament, it's something God didn't like. Right. Well, he probably still doesn't like it today. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> I mean, he never, he didn't, if, he never when he changes. didn't when he didn't like witchcraft in the Old Testament, yeah. he still doesn't like it in the New Testament. When he didn't like murder in the Old Testament, right. he still doesn't like it in the New Testament. When he didn't like adultery in the Old Testament, he still doesn't like it in the New right. Testament. Right. The, the the thing that's different, and this is where the churches miss it when they get when they start preaching grace and just just want to live like a pig and, and be blessed like a sheep right. and say I can live any way I want to. And it's it's what I call the Jesus doesn't care doctrine. Right? And they say I can live any way I want to, and Jesus doesn't care. Well, he does care, and right. it affects the it affects your standard of living on planet earth yes it does. doesn't affect your salvation with god it affects your your living on planet earth the way right. you ought to be living and and, and, right. and receiving what you ought to be receiving uh but um uh when, when, in the old testament the, the the thing that's changed from old testament to new and this is where the church doesn't get it is that it's not that there's it's not that uh god just all of a sudden doesn't care anymore it's just that he's changed the penalty for the things that he doesn't like. He's right. changed the penalty for sin. Those things are still sin. That's right. It's just that in the Old Testament, when you did those things and were in sin, you got killed. Yeah. You know, they stoned you to death. I mean, they killed you. Yeah, judgment. You know, but uh, in the New Testament, Jesus died for us. He went and died for us. Mm. So now when you get in those sins in the New Testament, it doesn't mean that God doesn't care. It doesn't mean that it's right. okay to sin now. It doesn't mean it's okay to live any way you want to now. It just means that, no, you, you still sinned, but you can get forgiveness and get right. repentance for that because Jesus has paid for it and Jesus has died right. for it. So, so it's not that the law has changed on what God likes and doesn't like or what he considers sin and doesn't consider sin. It's, it's that the penalty for sin has been paid by Jesus. You no longer have to pay it. But, you know, when people holler at me, oh, brother, I don't want any law, I don't want any law, you know, I, a lot of times I think, well, how would you like to go to Houston uh, this weekend or Chicago or Los Angeles, or, or New York City, and there not be any law. Right. Not a, not a policeman on the no, street. No, nobody. Not a red light nobody working. Nobody wants to do that. No, I mean, nobody wants to do that. Because uh -huh. if you get without law, then you get into total chaos, and you get into the law of the jungle. Right. Some law is going to prevail. And so if it's not the law of the land, then it's going to be the law of the jungle. And well, it, it's going to be this, it's going to be only the strong survive, and so pretty right. soon the, the 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 young tough guys are going to push the old people around and steal from them, right. beat them up, and they're going to push the little will begin they're going to push the little kids itself. around, yeah. and they're going to take stuff away from them and kill right. them. Right. So so man, I'm for law. Right. I just we just need to realize that the penalty has been paid. Thank God, you know I'm a pilot. And I love laws. You know, I mean, uh, I'm, I, I drive out here on these freeways. I love laws. I mean, whenever we drive out here on the road, then we know what I'm supposed to do right. because of the law. And we know what that guy over there is supposed to do because of the law. Right. And if he does it and I do it correctly, we're not going to get in trouble. No, it's just right. if one of us violate that law or one of us makes some major mistake and violate the law, whether it's on purpose or by mistake, it's still right. a violation of right. the law. Right. Uh, unless it's a mechanical blowout or some kind of a problem with the car, then you can just go along without wrecks and without problems. We know, we know who to yield for, who to stop for, when to make a left turn, when to go straight. And in, when, in flying, you know, I, I know what I'm supposed to do as a pilot. Uh, when I'm talking to the air traffic control, when I'm talking to the tower, they know what I'm going to do. I know what they're going to do. I know what they're going to tell me because it's all based on the law of aviation. It's based on the law of aerodynamics. Right. It's based on the FAA. And, and so uh, God is this great God of love. Mm -hmm. 
and this great God of compassion, and, and he will forgive us for anything and everything. He's already sent his son Jesus to die for us, to pay his blood. That doesn't change the fact that it affects our living on planet Earth if we right. violate the law. If we just go out here and live like a pig and then think God's going to bless us like a sheep and then wonder why he's not doing that. And it's because of those laws. We, we, we live by laws every day. You know, we have the law of gravity. Right. You know, you go out here and step off a, 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 a house, you're going to hit the ground. That's the law, and it doesn't change for anybody. <laughs> no, it doesn't. You know, when I learned to fly, I learned the laws of gravity, the laws of drag, the laws of thrust, the laws of, of aerodynamics, the laws of aviation, and everything operates by laws. So uh, thank God for the Word of God. And I don't see no, the Word right. of God as a, as a book that tells me what I can't do, uh, but I do see the Word of God as how, how I can live on planet Earth 66 volumes, 66 books that tell me how to live on planet Earth and how to prosper while I'm doing it, how to get blessed while I'm doing it, and how for me to be blessed, my family to be blessed, my finances to be blessed, and everything else that I do to be blessed. But anyway, back to Romania. I'm excited about our trip there, and I'm looking forward to these uh, pastors. And some of these pastors, as I said, I've known for such a long time and known their families. You know, in the old days, Renee, they used to beat their wives, and, and many of them still do, not the ones I'm ministering to, but many, many, many gypsies still right. beat their wives because they've taught that in church. Uh, I mean physically beat them. When I say beat, people don't even get that, but I'm talking about physically beat them because they take a scripture in the Bible about submission and just take it totally out of context, and they literally beat their women into submissions i've had to go over there and push those sacred cows over and say you can't beat your wife you can't do that no that's you know right. that's not what god's talking about and uh, so many of them have come and told me brother terry you've changed our life one evangelist came to me and fell down on the floor and in tears and brother terry you've changed our life he said he said i have beaten my wife every sunday before church every sunday since we've been married i have beat that woman and he said i'll never do it again because of what you've taught right. us so you know you just you just have to get in the word of god Teach the word of God, and then it's wonderful to watch it work in nation after nation after nation. I think I'm probably, Renee, one of the first people ever. I could be wrong on this, but I'm one of the first people, if I'm not the first, to ever put gypsies in a hotel. And I put gypsies in a hotel in, in Romania time and time again and and, uh, and paid their bill. And, and I tell you, you know, in those early days, it was just wild to, uh, to teach them how to live in a hotel and how to operate by the by the rules and regulations, you know, not take the pillows home and not take the, the, the sheets home or the TVs home, you know, and not to call everybody on the telephone. But, uh, uh, but anyway, I'm looking forward to it. We'll be there and not only been ministering to these pastors and to their wives, but then, you know, we always bring the wives in. I always bring the wives in, uh, because I want to teach both of them how to live on planet earth, not just the husband, but the husband and the wife, how they can both live on the planet right. and how they can be blessed. Their kids can be blessed. And then of course, when we finish that and finish training them in the word of faith and affecting their lives spiritually like that, then we'll go on up and we'll see our orphans and visit with our kids and, and spend time with them and take them to eat and take them shopping and, and all right. those kind of things. So it's uh, such a great trip. We appreciate our partners for helping us do all that. You know, that budget's going to be about forty thousand dollars this next uh, this next month. It's uh, with all the expenses, the hotel bills, and the, the transportation right. and the food, and right. you know, and our airfare and all the, all the stuff. This is going to be about a forty thousand dollar budget and. Uh, God's always provided that. Our yes, partners have always helped us with it, and we appreciate that. And uh, and so we're excited about uh, what God's going to do this time. Well, and you see, when we, I want to tie that all back in today as we close out, saying that everything that God does, you know, He He sees it all from the 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 end from the beginning. The Bible says He's a God of order. He's always uh, has a plan. He always has a way. He always has a a higher way and a better way. Uh, Isaiah 55 there, he says that his thoughts are higher than our thoughts. One of the things that I, I feel like in people are God shopping and looking about how to order their life and what choices to make is that I want to pick a God that's smarter than I am, that Absolutely. knows everything and that already has the plan. I don't have to go find a plan, present it to him and see if he likes it and, and somehow abracadabra or something will work out. No, I, I would like to know that there is forethought and planning and that there is a heritage that I can hook onto that is already valid, already proven. There's a foundation there to it. I, I was looking at, uh, just before the broadcast when you started talking about some of these things over in Matthew 7 and Matthew 8. There's so much in there in the ministry of Jesus when he's talking about, he, he preached that great sermon on the mount. But he says, narrow is the way. And he said that that it's a very straight way. 
And it's not that, that, you know, God's trying to make life difficult for people, uh, and, and get things out of order, but he has a specific way of doing things. And if no, we get, if we get involved in doing things God's way, his way, we'll know that his ways are higher. Right. His ways are better. Right. And that we can trust that, that in, during the same discourse here in, in Matthew six, seven and eight, not five, six, seven and eight in there, he's talking about building on the, don't build on the sand, but build on the rock. And that when the storms of life come, then you won't be swept away by the by the winds and the water, but you'll be strongly, uh, foundationally secure on the rock. And that's really what you've been teaching around the world, all these different nations and pastors and and leaders and church leaders around the world, is that that whole solid rock concept that God knows it all. And that we can trust Absolutely. in Him, and that we don't have to, you know, religion as you were in talking his about. Way is better. Yeah, that that you were talking about there in Romania and other countries of the world and other religions, even Christian religions. Uh, human nature gets hold of it, and we try to make it better, add more rules. We we do things that discriminate against other people, and if you don't look like us, dress like us, do it our way, then you're not as good as we are, and you can't be in our club. And that's not Christianity. Christianity is at the outset, certainly at the outset, the doors are wide open. Whosoever will may come. Right. But the way is going to be narrow. Right. You're going to have to still do it God's way. That's right. But you, everybody is welcome. And the more you follow the path, the more you, you go down that road, God's going to help you conform to the straightness of the path, to the narrowness of the path. If there are things hanging on your life that aren't helping you, uh, that somebody gave this example years ago, that path's going to get narrow, that all that extra stuff's going to start falling off. And and you won't need that. It's like a, a donkey with a whole big pack on him. Mm -hmm. You start taking all that stuff off of him, well, the little donkey can fit down that little narrow place. And that's the same way with us. I think God's trying to bring order. He's trying to bring large, great concepts into our life, but we're still going to have to do it his way. And it's the wonderful well, way of picking the right God. Because he operates by laws and right. principles yes, he and does. knows which ones work and how right. they do work. And what to do, what to do here to get something there. Right. Then he tries to bring you into his way of doing it, saying, "Hey, if you do it this way, it'll work for you." That's well, it, that's the whole point. And a scripture you and I quote back and forth all the time, based on what we're seeing and where we're doing, where we are, is there in Second Corinthians, uh, I think it is chapter ten. It says they compared themselves with themselves, yeah, thus they're, deceiving they're them. Deceiving if themselves. you have a if you have a lateral view out here on on the horizon of every, in other words, you're comparing your life to everything horizontally. Instead of comparing yourself vertical, vertically to how does God do it? Mm -hmm. God mm -hmm. always has a bigger, better way. Well, I want to lift up my eyes to the God way rather than to the man way. Whereas if I compare myself with some other woman, a minister or minister's wife on the planet, I'll say, well, I, I wouldn't do it like her way. I'd do it my way or I'd do it this way or her way is better. My way is better. On any given day, who's right or wrong about how to? You know, uh, it's going to be, if I compare myself with her, well, well I would never do that, or I, I do that better than she does. God doesn't want us doing that boastful comparison right, against right, somebody right. else. We All of our comparisons should be between my heart and God's heart and somebody else's heart and their heart towards God. Therefore, we don't come up with all those crazy rules that religion tries to put with everybody, and we try to make it more elastic and make it harder for people to come into the kingdom of God, and we make a hard way instead of a, a, a clear path for people. Amen. And, you know, our God is the only God that does miracles. That's right. You know, I've been to all these nations yeah, of the boy, world. I've had these, sure huge, I've had these huge crusades with, with tens of thousands <laughs> and hundred thousand people, and, and uh, there's just no God that does miracles. No, And that's the, that's, that's the big difference and the big, the big, big, big selling point, the big thing. Uh, wisdom, when I'm there, many the times standing on the crusade the platform over the years, I've said, you see this blind guy down here? You see yeah. this crippled guy down here? If this Jesus I'm telling you about doesn't heal him tonight, then he's no better than your old dead gods because no, they, right. they can't heal you that's either. That's right. And, and so, so, you know, the, the different, the proof of the pudding's in the eating. No, that's right. And it's coming up. It, when you're looking for a God and you're looking for somebody that, that you know, that, that's got the answers, he's all wisdom, he's all power, he never leaves you, never forsake you, he offers miracles, he offers forgiveness. <laughs> I mean, we've just kind of got it all. No, well, I'm glad you picked the right God. Yes, amen. Well, we're so glad you joined us today on the Terry Mize Ministries podcast, and we look forward to hearing from you. Anytime you need us on any level, we're glad to help you. Uh, email us. We've got books. We've got CDs. We've got things like that 
Internet that are available to you. And also remember, you can find us at terrymiseministries.com.org. You can find us at uh, the podcast at terrymise.com. We're available to you. We love you, and we look forward to seeing you next time on the podcast. Goodbye. You've been listening to a Mize Missions podcast. For all the latest updates to our global projects, speaking engagements, and social media, visit us at terrymize.com. You can partner with us to give living bread to dying men around the world. Get involved at terrymize.com. Until next time, thanks for joining us. This has been a presentation of Terry Mize Ministries.